the seemingly endless bayous of southern Louisiana. Thousands of square miles of marshlands, home to gators, birds, and not much else. This area could not be more inhospitable. This is not a place that is inclined towards sustaining human life. Yet despite this, a satellite image taken on January 10th, 2019, has uncovered mysterious evidence of human activity in these swamps. Looking at the image, I'm seeing two different structures here. To the right, there's sort of a, a string of boxes or blocks. The other structure is really unusual and kind of surprising. It looks like the top of a rook, like a giant chess piece in the water. It's unnerving to think about what's missing from this picture. There could be an entire town under the water. What happened here? What's drawn Martin Morgan to this site is that officially, there has never been a town in these marshlands. But clues suggest otherwise. That's not natural. You can totally tell. It's a road. Look at that. This is a bit eerie. The abandoned road leads Morgan to the set of structures at the eastern side of the river mouth. It's just up ahead here. This thing is incredible. It's even bigger than it looked in the satellite photography. A line of concrete ruins stretches for some 300 yards along the shore. Behind them are concealed hundreds of poles driven deep into the lake bed. This was a massive facility. Somebody with money, lots of it, paid to have this built. That suggests to me government money. Morgan thinks the structures bear the hallmarks of a secret military installation. Judging by the age, these could be seven or eight decades old. That's dropping all of this right into the time period of the Second World War. This thing is amazing. Look at this. While much of the structure has long since rotted away or been destroyed by hurricanes, clues to what drew the military into these swamps do remain. All down the line of these platforms, there are iron rings. These are gun mounts. The fact that you've got all these gun platforms lined up like this makes me think that I might be looking at an anti-aircraft training center. Declassified military records confirm that these sinking ruins were once a secret World War II training base called Shell Beach. And it played a key role in tackling a catastrophic shortcoming in America's defenses at the dawn of World War II. During World War II, the American forces, particularly the Navy, had this sort of sense of, of invincibility. Now, that is an image that's vastly different to what the state of the US military was just as the country was entering World War II. When Japanese fighters and dive bombers devastate Pearl Harbor, U.S. battleships are ill-prepared to defend themselves. 
It's a mistake the Navy vows never to repeat. When we get involved in the war after Pearl Harbor, the U.S. military has to begin a crash training program to get sailors trained up to shoot down enemy airplanes. With Nazi U-boats and planes also threatening America's shores, the Navy starts transporting rookie gunners into the Louisiana swamp to teach them the art of anti-aircraft warfare. Shooting across the lake would have provided a nice field of fire, and pilots would actually fly target planes to be shot at to get practice against live targets. 40% of the recruits are volunteers, many of them fresh from high school. After just eight weeks, they are sent to fight fascism in Europe or to join the Pacific Fleet and experience the hell of naval combat. The men who trained here would ultimately be on board ships that are fighting off waves of Japanese suicide aircraft. During the first few months of the war, U.S. anti-aircraft gunners shoot down 56 enemy planes. Within three years, they are bringing down almost 20 times that number. Thanks in no small part to these weird ruins in the Louisiana bayous. Just think about how critical this was. I mean, in many ways, it was facilities like this that produced the final victory in the Second World War. The decaying World War II facility sits just 400 yards from the larger sunken structure in the image. It could be a barracks for the training center, but that doesn't make any sense. How would you move people back and forth? Up close, the mystery deepens. Look at this thing. This looks like what a castle I drew as a kid looked like. If we were in Europe, I'd go, that's definitely a fort. But we're not in Europe, we're in Louisiana. There are other forts on the U.S.'s southern coastline dating from the Civil War. But this is unlike any of them. The forts are very low profile, but this thing, it's just looming up out of the marsh. It's incredible. To really get to the bottom of what this structure is, I'm going to have to get on shore and walk around it. To Morgan, the structure's medieval design is unprecedented. I mean, it's like a cathedral in here. I have never seen anything like this. This is unique. This is one of a kind. The crumbling walls suggest the swamp fort likely dates from the early 1800s. The structure clearly belongs to the era before the introduction of rifled artillery. Because in the era of rifled artillery, this thing would not have stood a chance. The middle of the 19th century witnesses the arrival of rifled barrels, revolutionizing the power, range, and accuracy of artillery. Brick fortifications are replaced with low-profile concrete ones, which can better withstand the apocalyptic onslaught of this new generation of weapons. 